right, let's do it live on a first Friday miracle edition of the program. Merely Bo, the great Z. Did you have a good vacation? <laughs> <laughs> I I, uh, I I will tell you this. Clean as a whistle. Feel good. Fantastic. I, I, I got to be honest with you. Looking good, Billy Ray. So it was one of those things going through, and, and I'll just do just public service. I'm not ashamed of it. I, I think everybody of our age, need, once you turn 45, you got to do it. Get a colonoscopy. Yep. And I've talked to, ironically now, multiple <clears throat> people in the last couple of days who are my seniors by whether it be one to 10 or in one case 20 years who have not wow and i'm like do it tomorrow i care about you for me do it tomorrow because the truth is and this is one of the things you know when we go down to the to uh, the sideman cancer Mm -hmm. when we're at uh and we have uh dr technos on with us and you know they talk about screening and prevention how important it is if you get your colonoscopy if you do that you will not die from colon cancer right you can just go ahead and cross that off the list of things that could bring you to your demise yeah if you do not get one, you may. You may. Yeah. So I cherish my time on this planet, and yeah. I realize that I can only control certain things, but that's something I can control. And so it's and it's not that bad. And I'll be honest with you, kind of having that cleansing, as it were. Yeah. Feel great. Feel great. I feel great. Yeah. I went straight straight from there once I was done. Got the the great grades. They were very pleased with me. We'll see them in a decade. Yep. And then. Uh, I was like, can I go get tacos? And they're like, yeah. well, you know, I don't know if we recommend that. And I'm like, good enough for me. <laughs> Boom. Took down took down four Carnitas tacos from the uh, Heinz and Chagrin Falls, which I think has some of the best tacos in Cleveland. And uh, I was feeling feeling great. There's a similar story with one of your other medical procedures where they say, yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. And you went right well, and did it. Got to gotta know. know. Got to know. One exactly. way or another. Got to know. I wanted, I'm not delaying this know. at all. Yeah. Let's not delay this. Let's just get right to it. But so um, it was It was all in all good. And again, please, everybody, yes, if you're over 45 or over, do it. It's it's not bad. You feel actually the whole thing itself is like it didn't happen because yeah. now, you know, they get to give you that stuff and you're like talking one second and then the next second you're in recovery. So it's, it's like what, never even So it's happened. a win. It Good is job. A win. Proud of you. Although I did my, uh, I had a, if it's go ahead. my anesthesiologist was uh, is a fan of the program. Yep. So he might be listening today and introduced yeah. himself. And I was thinking to myself, it's not often that I meet a fan. And then on that same day, they they really see me. They really see you. <laughs> they really <laughs> see me. Really see you. Yeah. yeah. Packed first time ever. I had the um, we had uh, you know there's for those who, there's a process you have to go through to be able to get the met, but best out of the procedure the next day correct and so um, you were uh, we had talked on Monday about <laughs> the banning of the boys and Bootsy was on a ban <laughs> but because he was off Monday he was he, he was greenlit now, for somebody a invited bit. me to a party yesterday and I hope that this is not this is not did you out him because he's elite he's banned he's banned he can't could have are the brothers all banned is everybody banned NBC wouldn't be. So but I but he was NBC. at lacrosse, so I don't know no. that. I'll have to. We'll see. I'll keep That's you. Very posted. interesting. I'll yeah, you I, I, you're like a little splinter cell for me yeah. on the inside of. Now the question is, will you be loyal to Bootsy or to me? Yes. Your spirit animal or to me? Yes. It's hard to say. <laughs> yes. It's hard to my say. Answer, my answer to so that. So <laughs> I get a text from you saying like, you were in the middle of one with them, and you had said like, if at any point I may have to, where well, I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. So was it you and Bootsy and NBC? And NBC. Yeah. By the way, so I'm talking to him, and he's like, I don't like the NBC name. He's yeah, like, I, I don't, don't care. Like it. And I was like, well, you had a great name. Yeah. And then you said, I'm not that anymore, so now you're just not that. Yeah. And he was like, I'm like, well, all right. I was like, we're a team in this world, so I was like, what do you want me to call you? Yeah. I was like, you come up with anything. What do you want me to call you? Oh, and God. like, And Bootsy's thrown out absurd nicknames that were hilarious. Yeah changing the color of the of the cobra for him <laughs> <laughs> which i was i was crying at uh, <laughs> literally he was crying i'm like that's unbelievable and uh he's like no he's like it just doesn't make sense why am i a cobra you g- gave this. himself the name i know look at this guy look at him look at this look at Boy, this it's a, it is a little look bit of a, it. it's a higher pant length than it we're is used look at to. there's a little he's yeah, flashing a little ankle look at the ankle but look little, at how that look at the jacket, the, the silhouette, taper, the, the taper. silhouette. It's painted it is, on. Yeah, Come on, it's, it's, a, it's beautiful. It's a Wednesday. It's beautiful. It is a Wednesday. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a first Friday. So he, uh, so he's doing that, and then he ended up, and I'm like, All right, I'll call you. You come up with whatever you want. Like, and yeah. this will be in our crew, and we'll see if we can get it to catch on. Yeah. If you want it to expand beyond that, and then he comes back, he's like, I guess NBC. 
<laughs> well, that's because it's hard. I'm like, okay. So for the for the new listeners, when he was very little, um, I used to call him the coach. When he was yep. little, I used to call him the coach. Um, I'm talking like ages one to two. So then he's like, I don't think I want to be that anymore. This is like age three. He's like, what about Black Cobra? He goes, Kobe's Black Mamba. Yeah. Why can't I be Black Cobra? And like, okay. I mean, I, there's a million reasons why you can't be, but why not? Why not? Who says no? So you, you're, thir- you're th- three years old. Let's go Black Cobra. So then a couple of years ago, we were coming home from school. And he goes, you know, Dad, um, it actually has probably been more than a couple of years ago because it would have probably been before Kobe's passing. And that was in 2020. So he goes, you know. I it was definitely while it was. It doesn't feel like that long ago that this happened. Dude, you and I have been doing this show a long Since time. Since 18. Yeah. I this think feels it, like it. the earliest it would be 2020. Earliest. Yeah. In there. Yeah. Maybe yeah, even so, later. Yeah, so it might have been later. But yeah. anyway, so he goes, you know, obviously I don't. Kobe was the black mama. I am I am not black. And so that's a tougher sell for me. And, I, and he goes, I don't know that I can be that. And so then we, you said, because we had not Pedro, then we just said not black Kobe. Yeah. So then that's NBC. But then so that's how it ended up. He came back and that's what he settled on. Yeah. That's yeah. What, well, because when you can't nickname yourself. Yeah. You know, like I had a bunch of nicknames for my brothers. You have a nickname for all of your friends. Yeah. Like I don't have a nickname. I've never had one. Have you? I mean, your Z Nate dog because Nate dog. Yeah. You know, but like I was Bischoff at one time because of Eric, Eric Bischoff. Bischoff. Yeah. But Bishop itself is already like to me. Right. Like that's like just what Bishop. I, most people just calls, call me Bishop. Is what, Bishop. I used to get that a lot. It was just. Yeah. Bishop that. Pickering. Yeah. So there was no uh, I, I never had one. I gave them to a lot of people. Yeah. But I never I never had one. So like when you put a, somebody on the spot and say, well, what do you want your nickname to be? I, I don't know. I don't know. It's tough. <laughs> it's tough. <laughs> yeah, it's like, he's like, yeah, we'll go back to it. But you're saying so I did. Yeah. I, I so had you to, had to. Evacuate. I had to go. Literally. Yeah. I had to leave. And I was. So I kind of let got into a fight that I would go down as yeah. a kamikaze. Yeah. Like a was, hero. Like, yeah. So I went down and I was still. They could have gotten my reboot, but it was a like, just go on. I was like, just go, just leave me. Like, you don't you save yourselves or whatever. And in the, it was really one of the sweet, <laughs> it was one of the sweetest things ever. Both Bootsy and NBC were like, we're going to avenge you, Mr. Z. We're going to avenge you. <laughs> so oh so I was really tickled by that. I was touched. Like the show I'm watching with the blonde, the Shogun. That's what you are. Okay, review. It's great. I've heard. It's like, unbelievable. Like buckle in next show. I need to watch. They should have done. The only thing I will say is, and you know, one of my things when starting now, this is brand new. They're only, they come out, they drop once a week on FX or on Hulu, um, but you only get one a week. So that, so that's the beautiful of it. You don't get eight and you're going to binge can't, but you can now because there's seven of them that you could. But the, um, I think if they would have known, or maybe they just, maybe it's just hard to do it these days. This easily could have been three seasons of television. Easily. And from what I understand, they're just doing one. They're going to do like the whole saga. But that's fine. Ten episodes, that's it. But like this easily could have been um, a Game of Thrones. I mean, this easily could have been three to five seasons. Yeah, Easy. Yeah. There's so much and you wish that material. They, and they're blowing through. I don't notice what it. happened in Griselda. Griselda needed. Right. You just got to let multi- it breathe yeah. a little bit. And I think probably it's just really hard now. It's just, just from like. This is like a inside the business thing, but when you read about how whether it's these streamings or the networks, it's hard to greenlight something that's this vast with the notion of well, are we sure this is going to be good? And the cost, so the balance and the, the cost of it. of it, yeah. yeah. So this the de- attention to detail on it is stunning. It's awesome. It's all you can do. The they do have the English language dub, so you could do that. But I just read the subtitles. I read the subtitles. Yeah. It's fine because you um, need the actual inflection correction it, it's more distracting to me to hear an english dubbed over japanese than it would be to just read the the text yeah. so it's same fine. with squid games you gotta watch it yeah just native korean just read it and um i also the other thing that's interesting about that i was actually just talking to my wife about that this morning with the show because she's all in on it it's, it's really great it's great love it. okay it's, that's our next it's, thing it's a watch. 10 out of 10 um we still have about 80 episodes to go <laughs> 80s on the episodes to go sons of anchor seven seasons of 13 episodes a piece buddy aren't great. the first like 20 I think it's thirteen. They're season all thirteen. One's thirteen. I think. Yeah, there's a lot, but you're gonna be, you're gonna know when to jump ship the, on that. The end of season one, we're get, approaching, and it is getting quite good. Oh, the first few seasons of it are unbelievable. Yeah, it's truly. I mean, you, it was one of the biggest hits on television when it when it was on. I mean, it was it was the hit of FX. I will say, just as a quick aside, we'll yeah. go right back to Shogun. 
Ron Perlman makes me laugh a lot more than I think he's supposed to. Yes. I think that that's fair. (laughs) Like, he's just not as believable. Like, some of the other guys are quite believable. Very, yeah. Tig, I think, is his name. Yeah, yeah, that guy. Very believable. You buy that. Buy it. Yep. Perlman... Like he he just said some thing where he was in he was interrogating a guy and like punched him and like acted like he was he had just run a marathon. Yeah. And I'm like, and you're supposed to be like the baddest dude. Like yeah. give me yeah. a break. Yeah. No, that's I forget that about them. Yeah, he I forget. Yeah. That's where here's the other back to Shogun. Yeah, back to Shogun. Yeah. This is what I would say. Because it is all subtitles, you've got to lock in. You have to lock in. There's no I you can't that. look at a phone. No. You can't double screen. You can't say, Hey, what's going on in the game? No. You've got to it's fifty-seven like minutes. Sale. You have to. You can't go to the bathroom. Yep. You can't like go get a beverage. Like you have to pause it. You've you've got to lock in, and it's immersive. Yeah. So I think you'll love it. I think you'll absolutely love it. Um, what do you think about uh, Justin Hardy coming home? I think it's great. I mean, you go back to the clip of him talking. You know, bring a, a championship to my city with Joe Flacco. That's the piece that we were missing, right? That core special teams guy. He's a special teams ace, was a captain for the Jets last year. I think it's great. You love to see him come back. You know how much he loves Cleveland. You know how excited he is to be back. I, I love that. Yeah. Love yeah. it. I think it's a great move. It's it's the Mike Ford. It's the Matthew Adams. But, like, that's the guy that he is. So yep. that will be Bubba Ventron, I'm sure, is thrilled with it. I'm thrilled with it. I know that Cleveland's thrilled with it. How could he not be? It's it's an awesome, awesome story. Um, Speaking of awesome stories. Yep. You got to for the first time in a long time, and I don't know if the boys participated as well, but you watched a little bit of the great one on Monday Night Raws where it's WrestleMania week, and he is so he's operating on a level yeah that it, is it was a unreal. very interesting Monday night because you had on two separate screens so I, yep you had The Rock yep so and I've talked to you a lot about The Rock um, and like the boys getting into wrestling um, and and all of that. And so this is the time to do it. Now, the only thing I'm lamenting is, should I have probably been in on this like a month ago with them? Yes. Probably. He's unbelievable. I mean, the vest he's in, it's just the whole thing is so great. Now, I missed him. I was out of on wrestling when he ascended. So I had two periods where I paid attention to wrestling. Little kid, Hulk, macho, that. And then the next time when I paid attention was a little bit in college, which was NWO. Yeah, but that was when he was he was up not on in WWE. it though. But that's this was because NWO is WCW. But he w- yeah, that's true. But I guess we must have been all WCW. Like I don't remember watching WWE. Like, do you at that know time. Stone Cold Steve? Well, no, of course we yeah, had him in studio. But and, did you watch him? Not in real time. So then, so like, so I, that was going on at the same time. Those were the Monday night. Okay, wars. so we were just I was all WCW at Got that it. point. So yep. that's my that's or right. I shouldn't say I was the, this buddy of mine that was one of our roommates in our house. He loved it and he loved like Hollywood Hogan, Bischoff, all that stuff. So you watched so that's, that, that was, was it. So they're doing that and then on the WWF side it was The Rise of Stone Cold, The Rise of Degeneration X and The Rock. Okay. So I th- I was on the other like one. Like Rock main evented WrestleMania in 99. See, I would have been out by then. I I would have said that my peak of this would have been like 97. Okay. Like so The was Rock like- was in WrestleMania there. So 90 Eight, I want to say, because WrestleMania 2000 was WrestleMania 16. So 15 was Rock Austin. 14 was Stone Cold HBK with Mike Tyson as okay. the enforcer. Okay. Was 14. So that would have been 98. All right. Yeah. So, yeah. so I have no recollection of that. Okay. Now, the only, so the only reason I became aware of, what, of how great The Rock was, was I had a guy I worked with in Columbus who loved The Rock, loved wrestling. And when YouTube dropped, he goes, because I would talk about like how I love like Mach on the mic and all those guys. He's like, dude, that's nothing. And he's like, he would oh. go, he would go watch this, and it would just be one clip after another. And the first one he showed me was him with Hollywood and Razor Ramon and Tugboat, uh, 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 that Big whole, Daddy Cool Diesel, all that. Yeah, that was like that 2002. Was like, okay, I'm like that. It was an evisceration. Yeah. So great. that was that's my only window into him. So the act that I saw from him on Monday, that's the first time I've ever seen him do that. Like full heel, I've never seen that because oh man, the only rock guy other than I've never seen it live. I've so seen the only it time on, he did it before this was leading up to WrestleMania 19 in Seattle, Washington, which is the first WrestleMania I ever went to, and that was The Rock versus Stone Cold Steve Austin three. Okay, and he became 
Hollywood kind of rock. Yeah. And he would come and do his invests and do the rock concerts. And he had like the slow beat that they use now for like when they finally have his music hit after the dun, dun, yeah. dun is the slow beat from when he was a heel before. Uh, which I see. is Okay. It is. That song is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. But usually that stuff leading up to Rock Stone Cold 3 when he's doing like rock concerts yeah. and making fun of Sacramento and he did like a Sacramento one that was unbelievable. He's he's unbelievable. He's the best. And he wasn't supposed to be. This was not supposed to go this way. Yeah. So I, mean, it's I was trying to explain that um in my morning occupation that that this that they basically they stumbled into this. Yes. Right? And so he's on the board, which is why he's involved and yes. all of these things. And then the other reality of it is it's considering that everything that's happened with Vince, yes. like there's this that's now, yes. this has filled that void in every way in a positive way for them. That's right. So, no, it was, he was unbelievable. Unbelievable. It was like 30 minutes. Oh, yeah. He was doing 20 minute promos on, on his social media platforms each week. Yeah. Like he's un, he's un, unreal. Yeah. So that was great. So we had that. And then we also had Caitlin Clark. So, so they had two. I've seen highlights yeah. of Caitlin Clark, and I, I don't know that I've sat down and watched a game. Sure. That was unbelievable. When she hit, when LSU made a little bit of a run, and they cut it to, I want to say, about like six. Yeah. And then she hit a behind-the-back step back from about – 29 yeah that was butter and i was like what she finished was 41 41 12 and 7 yeah 41 12 and 7 yeah so yeah the the all the idea that and 12.3 million people watched okay so you've seen this tweet did you go over this yesterday I don't uh, know. No, I didn't. Oh, no, because okay. we didn't have the numbers yesterday when we went on the okay. air we knew that i what did i say i said i said the over under is 10, 10. and a half million yeah, is what i thought good yeah, and it, that would have been astronomical, right. ten and a half. Here's everything that it beat. 12.3 mu- million viewers last night's Iowa LSU game had more viewers, and this comes from Joe Pompoliano. Any women's college basketball game ever. Yep. The 2023 NBA Finals. Yep. The 2023 World Series. Mm-hmm. The 2023 Orange Bowl. Yep. This one surprised me. The 2023 Big Ten Championship. The 2023 Cotton Bowl, the 2023 Pac-12 Championship, the 2023 Big 12 Championship, the 2023 ACC Championship, the 2023 Peach Bowl, Thursday Night Football, and every single, including all the SEC games, 2023 college football regular season game except Ohio State, Michigan. That's right. Yeah. That is that is insane. It did three million more than any World Series game. Yep, which is nuts. There's some other ones out there. It's higher. It did more viewers than every ESPN college basketball game ever. Period. Think Period. about how long they've been doing. Now they don't have the tournament, but that's all their ACC tournaments they've covered through the years. All of that, all the Duke Carolina stuff, not close. Has every Major League Baseball game last season, to your point, in the World Series, obviously NHL, MLS, all of that. Every NBA game except for one last season uh, was more. Period. That's finals. Everything. Period. Just one was more. And then every college football regular season game except that one. So here is the next – this is the part I wanted to ask you about as someone who's been around sports media for a long time and very, very astute. How much if – if, if there's a percentage, what percentage of 12.3 is she is a supernova and how much of it is some of the fall off of these other sports? So – I think it is. She it's is a, both. I think it's. I think she's a supernova. I think the matchup with Angel Reese and LSU, who had defeated Helped. them last year, was. And by the way, this goes back to the reason that this should have been the final. Yeah, or at least a final four. Yeah. So I do think it's that. If I, if you were to say to me though, like women's sports have never had this. I will say this as a quick aside. The women's tournament ratings, even before her, are grossly underappreciated for their ratings. Like the fact that ESPN gets that for like sixty million a year is a joke. Isn't weren't they getting like they get, sixes? Yeah, but that's still good more than most college football games, most yeah. 
most and almost all NBA games, all of that, like baseball doesn't come near it. None of those things do. Um, they really don't. So like they they are rating really well before this. She's the exception to it. So it's women's basketball. Women, the NCAA women's turn. Here's the deal. We love a bracket. We love a bracket. Love bracket. We love the idea of these two teams are going to play. One's going to win, and the other has to go home. We love it. We, that's why football is so great. Yep. Every Sunday matters. Every Saturday matters. The college football playoffs is going to do monster ratings because you're going to have a bracket, and you're going to go, next guy, he wins, he's out. And the NFL playoffs are money because win, go home. You don't get that in the other pro sports in this country unless it's a game seven. That's right. So that – they're never. They can't compete with the one and done nature of it. That is. That's a hundred percent true. But that's also been. That's always been true. That's always been true. Yeah. So, I think she is. There is something captivating about her style of play. It is. She is like very Steph Curry like pistol. Did you, Pete did you hear me say this yesterday? So this way, she's Steph. Yeah. She's female Steph with a little. She can shoot from anywhere. Yeah. And she, she her passing reminds me of him early. Because she sees the court, like when well, he just, always the had the passing ball. passing to me was like Pistol Pete. Yeah. Like she has a lot sure. of, of. There's a lot of yeah. panache. Yeah. She's. So I think it's. The other sports have declined. But when you talk about it, she being able to lead a college basketball game to beat all of the things we talked about in college football. Oh, yeah. That's not a declining sport. NBA, Major League Baseball, all of those in terms of ratings, we know what's happening. So I do think that she is. She is a supernova, which is why we've seen, you know, the big three offered her five million dollars a year, and she should take it. So interesting. So I wanted that's I'm so I real quick on the college football. The yes. one caveat to the college football ratings is almost every college football game, except for the playoffs, they go head to head with more college football. Of course. So, like, if you're what the SEC game on at three thirty, yeah, that's the biggest game at three thirty. But it's going against the ACC final or the Big Twelve final or the so they they're all competing against each other. So that's the one thing that this is also. That's I it. mean, and a Monday night is, I guess, a good night. But it's this a good is also night. a Monday night. It's a good night. That's why college football plays a national. And championship she was going head to head night. with the Rock. She you know, she obliterated him. <laughs> yeah, what she did. So so anyway, uh, right. the Big Three thing. Go ahead. So five million a year. So I was watching. Eisen's been on a heater of late, and so he's had a lot of good guests. Shout out to Eisen and my boy TJ, who they've done a great job, especially with WrestleMania and Curb, which they're like hitting everything that I yeah. I, I, am, I care about. But Caitlin Clark came up and they had Casey Wasserman on. Okay. And so he thinks that she won't do that. He understands why people would say that. He thinks that she is going to be worth from a marketing standpoint much more than that. That yeah, and she has a chance to be like she would walk in as probably the biggest legend in WNBA history, and has a chance if she wants to. El she's the one person he feels like could actually elevate the WNBA, and so he thinks that she feels maybe some responsibility to do that. Only reason I was saying it is five million bucks is five million bucks. So do that and then do both. Why can't she do both? Is what I would. She would get the marketing right. Yeah. I mean, she's you do both. Um, but he's probably right. I th so she's. I think the Indiana franchise has the number one pick. So she'll she's going to play in Indiana uh, next year. Is the way that that's going, or this summer? It'll be this summer with the WNBA. Um, I'll be curious to see if she, if if they let her cook, the way that she is. Because when you watch her play, every there's a LeBron factor to it, kind of too, where. It, Everything that Iowa gets comes off of her hand. Yes. It's either her shooting or, or her handing passing. it to somebody for a wide open jump shot or a layup, or it's a hockey assist, right? It's her pass leads to an overextended chin here and a kick out here. Every every possession she touches it. Yes. And has it the majority of the time. So like will the NBA WNBA be smart enough to let her play that way? I mean, if and not, will I'd get she, a different coach. Right. Because there have been others, like Tarazi, there's been others. But Tarazi wasn't the she wasn't the shooter Scorer, like that, right? No, but she was the oh, like best. best. And there's been others. I mean, they said she probably is the best in WNBA history. Yeah, is there's, yeah. There's been some others that have been stars, but there's a Steph factor to the way she plays. It's fun to watch. It's awesome, and you say like, God, she's really getting if that girl. That funny that Van Lith girl who was guarding her for LSU has taken a lot of junk for the way that she lit her up. I thought she played great defense. Those are twenty-seven foot sidestep fadeaway threes. And by the way, didn't correct me if I'm wrong. 
but it feels like she was below her typical field goal percentage in that game. Yeah, yeah, she had 41, but she was like 13 for 29. That's She's a volume. She's become volume. But like she at one point, she was 9 of 18 from three. Right. And all of them were contested except for one she got in transition. Right. She got one in transition. I thought the girl they, played pretty good D on her, honestly. I did, too. I thought there was a hand on everything. Like, yeah, one point behind she goes like the this. Back, step back from 28? Like, yeah. what are you going to do? She That's the Steph part of it. Yeah. Where Remember when Steph first started doing that, we were like, is he really going to – is this real now? Like, he's just going to shoot from 30 feet all the time? Yeah. And then turns out, yeah, he is. She, by the way, and had a couple is. from like 30 – some heat checks from like 35 that she did not make, but she was not no. shy about. No. She's here Friday. I know. So they got UConn on Friday at 9 o'clock. Um, it's the hottest ticket, dude. It is tic- – you can't get t- in the building. The get-in was 600 was the cheapest I saw. Yeah. Um, going up. Yeah, I'm They're sure. getting even more – Yeah, because this will go all week. I mean, this is – what it – is this the first time Cleveland's ever hosted a Final Four, and this is the one you get? You get the greatest. <laughs> the greatest show in the history of women's basketball? Yeah. Is showing up down there? Yeah. No, it's crazy. I mean, if she makes it to the finals. if And guess who they would play? South Carolina, who's right. undefeated. undefeated. South Carolina's lost once in the last two years, and it was to Iowa in the semifinal last year, in the Final Four. So, to win it, she's going to have to beat UConn, which is – the predominant women's power of the last but, 30 years. But are they this year? Well, they have that Paige Becker's girl who was National Player of the Year two years ago before she blew out her knee. Okay. And so, yeah, she they're like awesome, 32 and way, 5. She Monday had like night. 28 and 9 was, and Was 10. UConn a 1 in their region? I think they were a 2. They were a 3. 3. So, so, and Iowa was a Iowa's 1. Iowa's a 1. South Carolina's a 1. Okay. And who's South Carolina? Play? NC State. They're not. Yeah, the, both NC State men and women snuck That's in. Incredible. So UConn beat the number one seed in that region, which was USC, and then the other, the two was Ohio State. Oh yeah, so that was a loaded region. Yes. Um, so it's yeah. going to be South Carolina and the winner of Iowa UConn. That's what it looks like. Yeah. Would that be more? That get more than the men's championship game? If it's Iowa. So South the men. So NC State Duke did fifteen million on Sunday uh, on network on CBS. Did fifteen million. So it beat it head to head. In that sense, um, I, I don't. It's in play. Feels like if it's South Carolina. I mean, if Iowa, it's South it's Carolina, Iowa. I tend to think though, like yes, it helped that she was playing LSU, but I don't know that it was required. I think she would have done eleven million if they were playing Texas, truly, uh, whoever. Um, but I, I think it's in play. The men will, the men will have a monster rating though too. If it's Connecticut and Purdue, Monday night, that that'll be nineteen million. That'll be a big one. That's what they need it to be. They need it to be that. Yeah, yeah. No, it's great. It was, and they were going on at the same time. I was watching yeah. them both at the same time. It was great. It was really cool. Yeah, very, very lucky. Um, all right, we've got some NFL news of the day. A big trade in the league, a massive trade in the league. So we will get to that. Um, yes, Mr. Z. Is there a rule? I was gone yesterday, as you pointed out, on vacation. Yeah, on Is vacation. there a rule in the NFL that great players can only be traded to the AFC? It feels like that, doesn't it? it really feels like it. It's crazy. Uh, how how it's all happened, and well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it coming up next. Show us the Cleveland Runs Daily on eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.
Hey, friends, I don't know if you know about this, but you don't want to miss out. It's Billy Joel and it's Rod Stewart. They're together for the first time. It is Friday, September 13th. It's at Cleveland Brown Stadium. The tickets are on sale now. You visit clevelandbrownstadium.com slash Billy and Rod 2024. Billy and Rod 2024. Billy Joel, Rod Stewart, together for one night only. One night and only. And forever immortalized on this football. Which will be signed. Signed by Billy Joel and Rod Stewart. And Rod Stewart. And we will get it, uh, we're going to get it uh, signed up, and we're going to auction it off for some charity. That's exactly what we're going to do. I like it. I like it. Stefan Diggs to Houston. Let me let me propose this. Is this a win-win for both? It yeah. felt like they were headed for a divorce anyway. Yes. They get a second back. Yeah, in so 20. they're going to be able to draft a receiver. He's 31. So they... And he declined significantly yeah. over the last – he averaged 40 yards a game the last 10 games of the season, including yeah. the playoffs. Yeah. Um, and, and it's a win – Houston saying, "Look, we're we don't have to pay CJ. Let's go all in. In this this window came quicker than we thought. Let's go all in." So this is what their skills going to look like. CJ Strouds, the quarterback, Joe Mixon at running back, mm-hmm. Nico Collins at one receiver. Yep. Stefan Diggs at the other receiver. That's right. And Tank Dell at the third receiver mm-hmm. with Dalton Schultz who's very good. Yep. At tight end. Yep. And then on D, they added Daniil Hunter yep. to play opposite of Will Anderson. That's right. So they, they're a contender. They're they're contender. They, yes, very much so. Yeah, they are kind of who we thought maybe Jacksonville would be. Yes. This is better than what Jacksonville's assembled. Yes. Yeah, and they did it in a year. One year. Other than Nico, I think everybody else in the last year. Yeah, Dell was drafted. All these people were added. Stroud was drafted last year. Mixon added this year. Nico was drafted the year prior, or the two years prior. That was his third season. Yep. So this will be his fourth season. Diggs was added this year. Tank Dell was added last year. Dalton Schultz was added last year. Daniel Hunter added this year. Will Anderson added last year. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. So it's another contender in the AFC. Why? Well, I have them winning that division anyway, but yeah. why – is everything going this way? Why is everything going know. to the AFC? Like, if you're an NFC team, it feels to me like this would be an opportunity to make yourself better. Yeah. Like, I'm trying to think who would be a good – where he'd be – Diggs would be a good fit in the NFC. Like, the Cowboys would have C.D. Lamb and Diggs. Yeah. If you're – yeah, that those are the type of teams. Cowboys um, have his brother, too. Would have been perfect. Yeah, that's true. Um yeah, like is it is that Green Bay? Like, are they a team not paying a like, quarterback who could? But they got like eight second rounders, and they like all of them. Yeah, um, I mean, Chicago's tried to do that. Chicago got, did it already. They, they did it DJ already. They got Keenan. They got Keenan and DJ. Um, the Lions, they don't need to. No. Um, the Falcons did. I guess that's one thing we can feel good about is like the Falcons did ascend. They get cousins, so they will. They would be a NFC team that ascension. would have made sense. You put him with London and Pitts and Bijan, and he's kind of the underneath reliable. Yeah. In a dome. Right. Now, there are teams that I think were asleep at the wheel letting him go to Houston in the NFC where he could have made maybe more of an impact. Like this doesn't. This trade doesn't change the fact that I think Houston's winning that division. No. No. And it, it might be one that makes them, you know, elevate into that next echelon. Where yeah. you say, are they a team that can win the AFC? Yes. Are they a team that can contend with Kansas City? Yes. Um, and then the opposite side of that, the flip side of it is that Buffalo missed a window. Yeah, it feels like it's... They had a window They'll... where they had Diggs, and they had Gabe Davis, and they had uh, Von Miller, and they had that secondary, and they had all those guys, and it came in and went, and they they didn't get it done. And so they'll... Look, they've got the franchise quarterback, so they'll have to build around him again, they were um, very successful. They were. But they did not achieve the ultimate prize. Let me ask you this. Because I, I see this sometimes when I hear people talk like about the Cavs. Um, is their success short of – in where we are now, are fans accepting of success that falls short of a Super Bowl? Or is it – if you because when we were growing up, a great many teams – had great runs and were looked back upon fondly by fan bases and didn't win at all. There's a lot of those didn't runs. even didn't go even, to a Super Bowl, right? The one here, right? The Bills of the late of the early '90s is one that's looked back very fondly of. Uh, some of those Dolphins teams. There's all sorts of teams. It. I felt like when we were kid, when we were young, growing up, 
there wasn't this need of if you don't win the Super Bowl, your franchise is a failure. And now it feels like, and I think ownership and, and front offices around the league kind of take it this way too, where it's like, hey, if we're not contending for the Super Bowl, what's the point? So I would say it's not a it's failure a because mindset. they were contending for Super Bowls. They played an unbelievable game at home, took Kansas City to the limit. They lost by three. You lose an unbelievable game in Kansas City. Right. It's a couple of bounces of the ball, and maybe it's completely different. I think not a failure. A failure for them would have been not even being in a position to play in those games. Right? Like, that would be a failure. This is probably we met the expectations. Yeah. We were contenders. We were contenders. We absolutely could have gotten it done. We didn't. We lost to a dynasty, Yep, as I like to say. I like that. And so were they successful? Now, the problem is they put so much in to get it done that they're now in a spot that it feels untenable. Now, Josh Allen is sublime and he will allow them to be competitive but now they're not they don't feel like a Super Bowl contender anymore no no so no. now they would be a surprise to do what they did last year yeah I mean I right now if everybody's healthy I'd have them third in the AFC East I do too so yeah I I mean I see it all the time with the um you know like with the Cavs they're like you know we've they've got to now to me I just think they got to get to the second round but like there's like, boy, we, we got to win a we got to win a championship with this. I'm like, God, it's really hard, really hard. The, the, the cat for the Cavs, like the Cavs need to, where you would know that they've evolved, and it unfortunately looks like it possibly could be headed this way, right? Is that they'd have to go play the Knicks? Yeah, and that's a tough one for them. But the, you beat the Knicks. That's how you've oh we've yeah. advanced. Get to the second we round. We lost the Knicks last yeah. year, and now we've beaten the Knicks. Yeah, and if you beat the Knicks, I think it's all open. Styles make the fights in the NBA. It becomes very yeah. open for them. Very much does. Um, but yeah, Houston smart. They, yep. they, you know, everyone was saying, God, they, they traded all of that to get a, a quarterback in the defensive end. Well, if you land on both, look out, uh, voters in Kansas city yesterday rejected a stadium tax for the Royals and the chiefs intended to help fund, um, the new ballpark in Kansas. So it was going to be, they were to take the baseball field downtown. Mm -hmm. Both groups knew that this would fail, by the way, it was a wide margin, 58% vote voted against. Uh, they're going to take the baseball team downtown. It was going to be an $800 million net win for the Chiefs, of which Chiefs ownership was going to pay, I think, $300 million yep. of it um, to renovate Arrowhead. And it's um, just an extension of something that already exists. Already exists. Yeah, it's something that already exists. Um, but as we've seen with your beloved Oakland A's, it's just hard. I mean, you, the, the example of this happening was in uh, Buffalo, where they had they, they got $800 million from the state. Yep. To, and then I think they paid 800 so it was like a matching thing for their new stadium that's getting done. But it's tough. It's tough with public funding to try to find it and, and yeah. try to get it make sense. And I, like for just as an aside, right now the A's don't have anywhere to play next year. Yeah. So they, they haven't even – I don't think the Tropicana has come down yet in, La, in Las Vegas. It's being demolished, and it's eminent, but I don't think it's happened yet. Their lease is up at Oakland Alameda Coliseum at the end of this season – they met with Oakland officials to keep them there for three more years, but I don't even know why anyone in Oakland would care. And did you see the thing that like some of the guys were wearing like wristbands yeah. and they demoted them? Demoted them, yeah. Guy was hitting four twenty nine. Got to be the worst ownership. Guy was hitting four twenty nine. Yeah, and they. Psh. He stole like seventy bases last year for them, like yeah. seventy. And they're like, now nah, you're good. Yeah, like, you're wearing a wristband. Go down. So Sacramento's trying to poach. The guy that owned the Kings is trying to poach, and he's talking about using his stadium. He owns the. Um, uh, the Triple A Giants affiliate is in Sacramento, okay, and he's gonna he wants to split the stadium between the two, and have the A's play there for three years, and then almost be like a backfall if Vegas doesn't pan out, so that they could play in Sacramento. You can't play in Sacramento. So I have, I've never been to Sacramento. I have. <laughs> the th it's bigger than I thought. It's like the twenty sixth largest metro in America. What's the I've stadium no though? This is a Triple A stadium. Well, I know, but right now they don't have anywhere. The only other option is like Salt Lake City, like going to Salt Lake City and playing for three years in their AAA stadium. They don't have any options. They're I mean, only, they're only drawing 1,200 fans. people in Oakland yeah. anyway. Well, because the fans hate the owner. Right. It's not, it's not, a, no, it's of course. not the product. No. Well, he's intentionally submarined the part product well, that true. to make sure that there was no interest in the stadium. Yeah, people, then that's who the, uh, the tribe opened up with. Yes. 
That's a good way to start your season. Yeah. You may feel like Franchise we're, not trying. we're really good. <laughs> we're yeah. really good. It's crazy, though. By the way, Jimmy Bang Bang says the Cavs don't need to do anything. They want it all in 16. That's where I'm at. I'm with Jimmy Bang Bang. Yeah. Like, Same. it's really hard. Yeah. Really hard to do it. Um, but anyway, so I don't, Kansas, the Chiefs aren't going to go anywhere. It's just going to be a situation where they have to find another way to do it. Right. And quite frankly, if I'm the Chiefs, I bet, and I don't know if this, why were they linked to the uh, Royals? It's a great question. Because to me, if this was a Chiefs measure, probably be fine. Passes. Yeah. Who wants to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on the Royals? Nobody. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. So and it sounds listen, like people, if you've been to Kansas City, you've been to Kansas City? I've been through Kansas City. I wouldn't say that I've been to Kansas City. Okay. I've driven through it. So you've driven through it. I, I've driven, you drive right by the stadiums. They have zero interest in, in updating the buildings of that city. I mean, it looks like it could be out of the Cold War. That's what everybody like says. Like it's all Soviet cement. block. It's yeah. all cement. But it's insane. Yeah. So the Royals wanted to go downtown. Okay. And build, put their stadium downtown. That was, that was yeah, what yeah. they were hoping for. So I've is it down? I've never been to downtown Kansas City. Uh, again, I mean, just I think we freeway. have because our hotel was like right by the. Um, I don't know if they have like a big opera house there or a big something. Yeah, they have something there, and okay. we were right there. It's it's not like nobody's writing like poems about road trips to Kansas City. No, they're not. You know I mean? Definitely not. Um, the Broncos announced they're going to unveil new uniforms. That'll be April twenty second. Good. Um, so it seems like they are keeping the Elway Bronco though, like the late Elway Bronco, not the D. Bronco. But there will be helmets with the D, right? There will be, but I think their primary is still going to be like the Nike fied horse. No. Which looks like that Blucifer thing that they have out at the airport. Wrong. They still have the the actual one is there. Like the one that's yeah. in the other helmet is in the stadium. It's there. It's there. Use it. Yeah. Sounds like they're not. Um so both so who's getting new uniforms this year? The Texans, the Lions, and the uh, Broncos? What are the Lions doing? I don't know. Aren't the Jets getting new ones too? Well, they're just going to wear the back. They're going to wear the the uh, sack exchange sack exchange ones permanently. Yeah, they're just going to have a home away and a black version of that. Yeah. So yes, yeah, sort of. Um, but the uh, the you Lions, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Lions are well an improvement on what they've been wearing too. So they they wore them last year though. They wore the white version last year. Yep. So now they're just going to wear white, green, and black of that. Um, and then we're waiting on. We've seen leaks of the Houston's from ownership. And then we had, um, and then I don't, I'm, the Lions. I thought we're doing it too. I think they're doing something okay. this year as well. They got to be careful. I think they got a kind of cool look. I wouldn't screw with that too much. Um, so that'll be on April twenty second. Um, and then we did have uh, Bronny James entering the portal, NCAA transfer portal. Sometimes feel sad for for he's not LeBron. Clearly, no. It's okay. It is. It's just it's fine. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's tough. Tough spot. Um, our interview with Jameis Winston will be coming up next. You'll listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Inside Cleveland Brown Stadium, now get your chance. The Upper Deck Golf, it's Friday, June 21st, Saturday the 22nd. Enjoy a unique VIP golfing experience while hitting tee shots from the Upper Deck down to custom greens on the Cleveland Brown Stadium field. For more information, go to UpperDeckGolfing.com or reserve your tee time today. That's UpperDeckGolfing.com. And now our conversation with Jameis Winston. I'm not sure that you and I ever thought this moment would actually happen. We have been wanting Jameis Winston to be part of the Cleveland Browns for many, many years. Fact. Uh, big, big fans of yours. And so we're thrilled to have you here in studio. Thrilled to have you as a member of the Cleveland Browns. With a tremendous overcoat, by the we way. We were just, just lamenting the gorgeous overcoat that you're in. Um, how did this come about? First of all, welcome. And yeah. then how did it come about for you to be a part of this organization? Well, it all started uh, when I became, when I knew I was going to become a free agent, and I just got so sick and tired of great weather and <laughs> beaches and <laughs> music. And I said, like, what is the place? Let me challenge myself. Well, yeah, what is the what is the place that I know that I can give my kids some snow, That's you it. know, for Christmas? Like, That's like, ain't, ain't, ain't or no. Or in more. March. Well, uh, no, no. But honestly, <laughs> like, uh, no, it, it's it's truly a blessing uh, to be a part of the Dog Pound and to be on this radio show with y'all. But uh, I've always admired just the, the history of Cleveland and what it encompasses and to be able to be a, a part of that now uh, is, is amazing. What was kind of the sales pitch to you? Because in free agency, it's great. It's a, a mutual recruitment, right? What was kind of the sales pitch from the Browns to you about why this would be a great place well, for you? Well, when you when you see how this team rallied together uh, after uh, significant injuries you know, yes. on both sides of the ball and, uh, and, and they were able to do it with, with four quarterbacks, you know, so one, you know that the roster uh, is one of the best rosters in, in the NFL. Uh, when you when you have a free agent signing that shocks the world, like Zadarius Smith is joining Miles Garrett, yeah. you know, last year I think that shocked everybody. You know, when you have a, a fierce defense that uh, know how to take the ball away sure. uh, and know how to stop the run, uh, that's enticing for for any quarterback. Uh, but but also uh, when you when you have the opportunity to impact and influence uh, a young quarterback who you have admired uh, for, for from afar and have competed it against, uh, it, it really was a, a, a no brainer uh, for me. Uh, opposed to you know obviously looking for opportunities to start, sure. Uh, but but knowing uh, the head coach here, Kevin Stefanski, is able to to win with with you know with. With with uh, with his strat with his strategies, uh, and with his um, uh, amazing ability to lead a team despite what they may grow through, uh, you you have to admire that. Yeah, it's interesting. The so when I was we were talking off air when you were down like that's a small world that Southern quarterback world, and so you coming out of Alabama going to Florida State, Deshaun coming out of Georgia going to Clemson, and you guys didn't intersect in college right he came just slightly you're done in 14 and then he's in in 15 yeah I think at Clemson but it was a I remember even talking about it in the greater college football world like it was a passing of the guard from best quarterback college football Jameis to Deshaun mm -hmm. he was next he had next wait, wait, it, so, started, it started with Cam Newton well yeah way back yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Cam yeah, even before yeah, you yeah. for no, sure no. but like was there a um how aware have you been of his career throughout yours and I'm sure he emulated you gr wanting you know, having you being a couple years older. Yeah, well, I, I think his intangibles um, was was all. It always stood out because his ability to to make plays and uh, being from the state of Alabama, uh, him winning the national championship with, Cle with Cleveland in Tampa. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, obviously all the, the the excitement that was going on when the college football playoff had came to Tampa. I was able to, to uh, have a few appearances and, and talk about that. Uh, and, and he didn't win, he didn't even win the Heisman that year, which uh, I, I, I thought that he he he, he would definitely uh, could have, could have. So uh, him seeing him beat Alabama uh, in the national championship stage uh, was prolific. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, because uh, you know. We, we beat Auburn, mm -hmm. but just being in that Southern Ram, we know for so long that Alabama was king. Yep. So I think when he did that, he definitely got his street cred from everybody <laughs> around. Uh, so uh, I, I'm, just, I'm just proud of him, and I'm, I'm happy to get to work with him. And I know that you've talked to him since, since you've signed, and I remember right when it was announced that you had signed, you give a quote to Josina about how you were going to help him be the best version of himself. How's kind of those conversations gone? I'm sure he's got to be thrilled as well. And we've yeah. got to know him. A great guy. Yeah, well, uh, I'm obviously right now the most important thing is, is him getting back and, and, getting, and yep. getting recovered. Uh, so I know he's passionately pursuing that right now. Uh, but we, we will be connecting over the course of the next two weeks. Um, but, I, but I think in terms of just uh, growth, 
and learning from your experiences, uh, I have played every role that you can play as an NFL quarterback uh, in this league, up to in just nine years in the league. So just me being, being able to bring that and being able to, to bring a certain energy around him and be willing to serve him and give him something that he probably hasn't gotten. I know uh, uh, I'm, I'm cool with Jacoby Brissett, and I know that they, Great they, they got a chance to, to work doing that, and that was a tough season. But uh, I'm just excited to get in the room with him uh, see how he worked. Like it, it's different when you see someone hand in hand. You can hear, you know, about what people do. Obviously, you can see on TV. But when you get a chance to connect with somebody and be in it with them, uh, you, you can do amazing things together. Yes, yeah, certainly. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, kind of along that line. You know, we're moving from what had been kind of an under center, a lot of you know, marriage of the run and pass, the play action, the keeper game, all of that, to maybe more of a shotgun style offense now with Ken Dorsey that's something I know that you've been very comfortable with your entire career how how important or how influential was that factor as well saying this is not only a chance to work with you know Deshaun not only a chance to be with a great roster that can win knowing that if you get an opportunity to play you're going to be able to win but also having an offense that probably is going to suit what you like to do pretty well yeah well you know one thing I like to do is uh is Hand the ball off to Nick Chubb and watch him that get is very, uh, yeah, that's you know, 150 uh, a game. And I think you build an offense based off that. You know, when you when you look at how the, the Cleveland Browns have ascended to being one of the top teams uh, in the NFL, it's because of their fronts, mm-hmm. right? A great offensive line. Yep. Like you think about the, the injuries that we had on the offensive line last year, and we still were able to overcome that and still have, you know, a, 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 a dominant rusher who, who was new, new to the team, you know, uh, despite uh, Nick being hurt. And I know he's recovering his, his, his tail off the injuries that Deshaun had. You know, and you've been you seeing this offense evolve around PJ Walker, around uh, what, what was the Dorian DTR, uh, DTR, D- yeah. DTR, and seeing the just the 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 excitement that Joe Flacco was able to come him win and come back Player of the Year of what throwing bombs uh, off seven games, yep. yeah, you know, you know, and and I think that just shows what one. Uh, the men and women that are in this building are doing something right. Uh, and two, when you think about offense, like everybody wants to pass in this league, but every defensive coordinator, offensive coordinator knows it starts. It starts with the run, and it finishes with stopping the run. Yeah. So the ability that this team has to run the football is only going to open up so many more opportunities with the different things you can do out of the gun, the different play actions that you can create, the different uh, gimmicks and trick plays that you can get off of this new wave of, of shotgun offense. You know, it's funny. You're as 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 it's all of these things are so cool, but there are so many connections. As as we, we were talking about you and Deshaun, and you think about you know Jerry Judy, you think about Amari. I mean, you and Amari say, same yeah. age, Alabama, Alabama, another one. Um, Elijah, Elijah Moore, Nick Chubb. I mean, like we Georgia. have so many big state U Southern Chief dudes. Florida, the U. Chief went to you. Yeah. I mean, we have so many of those guys um, that that are on this team, and I. The one thing I know that AB likes about it is, is if you if you played at one of those places and you're from that part of the the country, you understand what football is all about at the mm-hmm. very highest level. And I think you're going to find that when you get here in the fall, that these people view it the same way. Mm-hmm. Um, that there is a the way that there is a big game on campus in Tallahassee, and the way that that feels mm-hmm. on a Saturday morning. That's the same thing you're going to find here on a Sunday. Mm-hmm. And I think the guys thrive in it. I really do. Have you have you picked up on the connection between all of that stuff in terms of this organization and the the big state U Southern connection? Yeah, uh, a- a- absolutely. Um, I-, I just know one thing about. Let's just talk about the fan base. Like when uh, we we came here. Uh, Two years ago, a year ago, uh, and played in you know one of the coldest games. I was going to thank history. you for not making sh- that you say I'm not going there because that that was for here even that was insane. You know, like that was not normal. But there were people in the stands <laughs> without shirts. You, you know, and like and, and obviously that's that's odd and crazy when you yeah. think about that. <laughs> yes, like, it is. Obviously, you got to think about your health, but <laughs> but just think about the commitment. And, um, and honestly, you know, and I, I and I know I'm not with New Orleans anymore, but that's something that I really admired about that that city in New Orleans is just the fans were always involved. And when you think about the the Cleveland Browns, you think about the dog pound, yeah. you know. So these fans, they're what make things go. Like they're they're the reason that we all have a job because these people, their livelihood is watching the Browns play football. Yep. So uh, you know, I, I'm very grateful to to be a part of a of an organization in a society that encompasses you know that that. Great Iron, that hard nose, uh, and, and, and really increase. They they yeah. know they they know that we're trying to make everybody better. We we all feed off each other. Yeah, there's no doubt. You've said it many times when you guys who come from the big schools like yeah. you did. This is as close as you'll get to that collegiate atmosphere in terms of really the way is. the Browns yeah. fans are. And I joked with Joe Flacco. 
probably after maybe a second game, I go, you're going to end up being more popular here than you were ever in Baltimore. And he's like, yeah, okay. And after we clinched against the Jets, he's like, you're right. He's like, it's, <laughs> my family's like, this is crazy. It's just a great place to play football. That's what they, that's what they do here, you know? And yeah. I know that you appreciate that. It's the, it's the love for football. You know, uh, yeah. and just go back to the – like, down the south, like, you know, we have football. That's what You we know, it, like, we don't have hoops, you know, because, like, obviously the impact that LeBron James has made on this community is amazing. Uh, but Ohio even has good basketball. Mm -hmm. Like, Alabama, we don't have – you know, we don't have the best basketball, but we have a lot of superstar players that come out. Sure. Uh, but – the love of football is something that I, I feel like I attract to. And yeah. I know that this city really loves football, and, uh, and that's why uh, I know that I'm really going to love this city. Yeah. It's going to be fun, man. We're, we're excited. So one of the things I always ask the people when they come in yeah. is, what's something you just want Browns fans to know about you? It doesn't have to be about your football. It doesn't have to be about your work. Just anything in general that when they see Jameis Winston out there, you look, this is what I want you to think. Yeah, when, when you see me on the street, just know that I'm a man of faith and I'm looking to encourage and inspire anybody that I'm around. You know, uh, one of my favorite athletes of all time is uh, Muhammad Ali and him being able to just be be approachable to anybody that came around. I always wanted to make it a, a, a great experience. Now, when, when I'm eating dinner with my family, I will always respect my family first. But uh, I got so much respect because I know it's a privilege to have this, this platform and get a chance to serve the community the way that I do uh, with a sport that I love. So just know I'm a man of faith. I'm a man of God, of Christ. And I know uh, that I'm here to inspire and increase uh, the people uh, of the next generation and even you if you come in. We'll take it. I'm in, man. We're in. Yeah. We're in. Well, it's a long right. time coming for us. Yes. We've been rooting for you to be here <laughs> for a very long time. It was great having you here in studio. Congratulations yes. on being a Cleveland Brown. Welcome to town. Look forward to seeing it uh, on the field here shortly. Jameis Winston in studio. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Hey friends, after the recent storms, is your roof in need of inspection? Look no further than my friends at Renew Home Exteriors. Renew offers a free roof inspection using cutting-edge drone technology. I've seen this stuff in work. It's Man. absolutely stunning. Artificial intelligence there to assess the damage quickly and accurately. They're going to work directly with your insurance company to ensure that your claim gets approved hassle-free. I've seen it. It's amazing. Rest easy. Worry less about your roof with help from Renew Home Exteriors. Visit RenewEstimate.com to learn more on that. We've got head coach rankings from our friends at the Pro Football Network. Who is the Pro Football Network? It's the the network of pro football. (laughs) I don't know who it is. Because it's not PFF. I answered that like wedding crashers when he was like, who are they? Oh, the uh, son of – yeah, we're the – Son of Tim and, Je- uh, Tim and uh, Uncle Ned's kids. Uncle Ned's kids. Yeah. Uncle Ned's the kids. The kids of Uncle Ned. Yeah. yeah Uncle the, Ned's yeah. kids. Yeah. yeah, we're the kids of Uncle Ned. Oh. Yeah. Okay. B. Lynch. Legend. That, uh, that the hour from crab cakes and football until the painting was a gift is perfect. Okay. Here's a fun did you know for you. All right. Season one, Sons. Yep. The guy who works in the shop, but his father had, you know, gotten into yeah, some Opie. Bad, not are you not Opie? Not Opie. Not Opie. It was kidding. He brought his son to the shop with him, and then he gets in trouble and he's into drugs. Basically, same thing as dad. It turns out that they had actually. This is not. I'm sorry. There are no spoilers for Sons of Anarchy. No, anymore. no. It's been on 15 they years had, ago. They had. The sons actually killed his dad, even though he was a member of the sons because he had Why done some I bad things. That scene. And the kid. Who then it goes off and is goes on a bender and they find them all like cracked out, being like exactly the same as his dad. Yeah. Um, that ki- that was Todd. You're kidding? Not. I couldn't believe it. I go, I know this guy. Where do I know? It's and then somewhere. I'm like, I'm like, is that Todd? Yeah. And then I looked it up and it was Todd. Oh my gosh! Speaking of the wedding, I vaguely artwork. remember. I've. It's been a long time since I've seen. Season one of I watched that show in real time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So week to week, when it was on FX. So I, I've revisited some episodes here and there, but I haven't seen it like all the way in a in a long, long time since it aired in real time. Um, I'm excited that you're watching it though. I'm I'm definitely enjoying it. Yeah. Very. How about Miss K? Is she doing okay? Yeah. She. Yeah. 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 I don't think she like. She's not as drawn to it as I am. She I, she does get a kick out of the fact that I I find Ron Perlman to be a combination of my cousin and her dad. <laughs> like I, I and I'll always be like I can see your dad say that. And yeah. She's like, what are you what, what are you talking about? And it makes me laugh. Peggy Bundy throwing about 110, she, painting the painting the corners, man. Painting the black. She's she's yeah. She's yeah. doing a, she's, she's doing a great job. Great job. Yeah. How about the fact that the lead is an Englishman? That the lead, Charlie, yeah, Jax, yeah, he's an Englishman. Where has he ever done anything else? They tried to launch him. So very similar thing happened with him that happened with Tim Riggins. So yeah, yeah, they were yeah. huge television stars. Taylor Kitsch, I believe, is the name. Taylor Kitsch, huge is Riggs, yeah, huge yeah. television stars. Um, they had this matinee idol looks and charisma and all of this. And so I think Kitsch did like john from mars or something like that i mean it's, he did he had like several big budget launches where they tried to launch him as a yeah. hollywood star it's been a long time but it, I, I know there was one where he was like it was something it was something with ocean and robots i can't remember but it was a huge these were huge um huge movies that were trying to launch and the same thing happened with charlie hunnam he was actually he was in guy Ritchie's. was it i think it was his king arthur he did a King Arthur ripoff that had okay. him in it. Um, and he had other things that he tried to front, and, and it just, just didn't take. So he's he's in like that movie, The Gentleman, which the, the TV series is very good on Netflix. Yeah, like you're it. liking. It's fun. Yeah. It's, our, it's done, but it, it was good. Um, so he just does that stuff now. But he was, yeah, he was as big as anything at yeah. that show. was, And he's got charisma to so s- in spades. He looks like a guy that I went to college with, and he – so he reminds me. He looks like Savannah Dan Stabonis, who went. I was on my freshman hall. Like the same hair. Oh, he had that. Yeah, that like, was a popular look at that time. Like kind of get it behind your ear. Yeah, like that about that length, blonde, good looking guy. So similar, and then he has some of his like walks and mannerisms. And this is 
He doesn't do this. But there is a Mitch Kramer miss <laughs> to the way that he moves at times when he's being kind of like from, from Days and Confused. From Days and Confused, who touches his nose every time he's in every scene. Which is absurd that that yeah. was allowed to happen. Yeah. But so he is so I find him to be I find him to be very compelling too. I think he's very good, and I'm surprised that he did not that he wasn't able to handle it. So Kiro Donnell is the name, I think is this Todd Cleary was Keir O'Donnell, and yes, he was in season one of Sons of Anarchy. That's crazy. I it was nuts. I was like, I can't believe, I can't put my finger on it. Who is this guy? And it was. Todd. I would not have. I'm not sure if I would have had that. Well, you have it now. I've got it now. You have it now. Painting was a gift, Todd. The painting was a gift. So good. I better see him in the season ser- season finale, series finale. He's got. I need be. the Funk Man in there. I need Freddie Funk Man in there. So, I'm He's hoping, missed the last two episodes. Can I tell you what I'm hoping for? Go ahead. Have they released the runtime of the finale yet? I haven't. I could look in my guide. Yeah, look at see if there's see if there's any any hints on that. I'd like I'd like it to be a movie. I'd like a 90 minute treatment, and I would like part of it to be like a walk down memory lane, like you got in kind of the the preview of like. All the crazy they, stuff he's yeah. done, all the things times he's pissed people off. Yep. And then have the trial, and then I want him at the end to get off. I want him to be exonerated. Because there are a lot of people he's done some good things for. Yeah. So it's funny. He actually did. He did. Remember, he tried to end this in 2005. Right. And there's whereas, actually an episode, The End. Right. Yeah. If and he that dies was 43 or not. minutes. Was how long that one is, <clears throat> but I don't see anything on, on how long. I'd like an hour and a half. I can't believe he's trotting this out there head to head with Night Two of WrestleMania, though. I could see the Curb and WrestleMania <clears throat> audiences being very similar. You think that that's a there's a <laughs> listen. I, Eisen thinks they are. He's just that's all he's got. You, me, it's, Eisen, and S. Yeah, like those are the list of people that'll <laughs> cross that'll over. Intersect. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I think it was it Eisen. Somebody said like wouldn't be surprised if he like he makes a par and then just walks off and that's it. Like just finishes at the country club. Like makes a par at Riviera and then just walks off and that's it. And that's the end of the show. Hold on, Eisen said that. I don't think it was Eisen. It was somebody else. It was somebody in the Ringer world. I hope it wasn't Eisen because Eisen <clears throat> gets he's part of their test panel, so he so he gets to see some stuff early. He would have scores. Yeah, yeah, luminaires. Yeah, it's they're around. Um, no, I yeah, I just the cool thing about it now though is, and this is the big difference between like the Seinfeld finale when that dropped, is when that dropped, there wasn't the thinking of that you'd ever be able to revisit it. Like, sure, it was going to be on in syndication, but you couldn't just watch an episode whenever you wanted. Right now with streaming, you watch anything whenever you it's want. All on so demand. you can revisit Curb at any point. Yep, and and watch it. I it's, as I like to do on airports, air, it, airlines if they have a It's awesome. Yeah, it's very good. All right, so this is a Pro Football Network. Uh, this is their coach rankings, uh, power rankings. Our guy eleven on the list, two time coach of the year. So it comes it in feels 11. to me like a little silly that two time coach of the year in the last four years. So was... Andy reads one appropriate. Fine. All right. So here are the guys two to ten. Uh, McVay. Okay, he's won a Super Bowl. I can't I don't have a whole lot of beef there. He's two on the list. This is one of those oh my God. This website, Uno. Come on. This thing is just brutal. Like I I have it up. It's got a thousand pop ups, six billion ads. It's a click through. Is it a click through? I can't I have so many pop ups popping up on my screen right now. I don't even know who's three. I have it pulled up if you want me to read the top. Do it. Do it. You Number do it. Because I can't get this. Yours isn't doing this. It's probably just because it's on the desktop. Yeah, the phone's working much better for it. Look at this. All right. How many? How many? Look at. There's a cat. There's a cat. Here's spaghetti. There's save 30 at Meyer. By the way, are you getting fed Liver King a lot on your on your Twitter? Yes. So it's what's everywhere. going on? How is the Liver King dominating Twitter? I thought he was I, in jail. I don't. He feel like he should be. I thought I, he was exposed he, for being a I am not a his target in any way, shape, or form. No. And I am getting ads for Liver King nonstop. He often slams fantasy football in his ads, which I don't understand. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand his act at all. All right, give me two through ten. Number two, Sean McVay. Yeah, that part I could see. Where's, where's, where's Kyle? Kyle's number three. Kyle should be ahead of Sean McVay. 
Number four, John Harbaugh. Number five, Mike Tomlin. Number six, Jim Harbaugh. What? Well, that's stupid. And then seven, Matt LaFleur. Eight, Sean Payton. Nine, Dan Campbell. Ten, Mike McDaniel. That's a top ten. Matt LaFleur. Nine was who? Who was nine? Eight? Eight, N- Sean Payton. What? Nine was Dan Campbell. Okay. And ten was who? Mike McDaniel. Mike McDaniel. All right. So our guy is two-time NFL Coach of the Year. Uh, he's behind several who have never won it. Um, I have no problem with McVay being ahead of him. He's won a Super Bowl. Uh, and had, they were great last year. I think it buttressed his legacy even more. He's played for one and then won one. So I have no problem with McVay being two on the list. Um, Kyle is three. I have no problem with John Harbaugh. I have no problem with with Tomlin. Um, I think Lafleur gets a little dicey. Like we're, we're he did sure. a pretty good job at Jordan Love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does. I mean, they've won all the time. They've been a very good. Jim Harbaugh ahead is crazy. Uh, I think Sean Payton. I know he's won a Super Bowl, but like, we sure this list isn't made five years ago. It's That's made what, yeah, now. I know. I know. And here's the thing I said the other day. I think I said this on with Mo Pedman and. Are we sure he's that good, or was Drew Brees that good? Well, right. Well, right. And are you one recovered onside kick from nothing? So uh, I just <laughs> like, are we? Is he able to reach the twenty twenty four NFL star? It doesn't feel like it. It doesn't. It, it was. Like it, it went about as poorly as it could in year one, and it feels like it's going to get worse. Right? Like there is. They, there's a. There's a world out there where they are the. They're picking you, first in the next year. Let me ask draft. you this: Why does he get? To, so, so to me, what is the difference between Sean Payton and Mike McCarthy? I think people would say that Sean Payton at least felt a little more innovative in his time i don't know i don't know you're and probably it, right that's probably what they would say and he but won. i i don't know if he was more right or if he just had breeze who was really accurate and threw it on the screws and the other guy had rogers and Favre. belichick who is yeah great had brady had brady didn't go well when he didn't no in any time no turns out that's kind of important that's yeah. why i think when you think about what our guy did right with four different quarterbacks winning games in a season that that says something to me well that's why I, that's why i have no problem with mcveigh McVay at one he, jared goff all the way to a super bowl stafford wins a super bowl playoffs last year kyle has led how many quarterbacks different quarterbacks he's at garoppolo oh man he yeah had right purdy? matt ryan brock purdy all of those guys to super bowls uh john harbaugh i have no problem with that tomlin too never loses never has a losing record ever Poor kyle man It's just hard. It's hard to get back. It, three bites at the apple. Yeah, is a lot of bites. It's a lot of biting, brother. Yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah, and you don't know how long that can all continue. Yeah. Um, who's last on this? Who's the worst coach in the NFL in their mind? So they don't rank the <clears throat> first year head coaches. The last one of the veterans, twenty eighth, is Dennis Allen of the Saints. Del- Dennis Allen is worse than the guy from Chicago. Yeah, they have Eber Flues, 24th. Jeez. Wow. I had Ed home on yesterday, and I asked him, like, you make sense of this? Why did they keep him? Why wouldn't they start fresh? Nobody knows. Nobody, Nobody knows. Nobody can make sense of it. Yeah. Why they Why they wouldn't start fresh. Yeah. All right. Um, do we have a Griff? We have a Griff fact of the day because there's one every day. Yeah, so that's we'll ha- next. That's next. We'll have that next. All right. And then we're going to get into a little fact or fiction in the whip. You listen to Cleveland Runs Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Be sure to check out the Browns' social media channels daily to play the Browns' digital scratch-up game for your chance to win club seats and other great prizes. Presented by the Ohio Lottery, the official lottery of your Cleveland Browns. Time for the Griff Fact of the Day. Fact of the Day, Fact of the Day, Fact of the Day. It's the Griff Fact of the Day. In the entire history of the NFL, there have only been two field goals of 64 yards or more. Justin Tucker in 2021 and Matt Prater back in 2013. This week, though, in the UFL, Michigan Panthers kicker Jake Bates made a 64-yard field goal to win the game for the Panthers. It was his first field goal attempt since he was in high school. What? He He didn't kick in college? He was a kickoff specialist mostly in college and a soccer player mostly in college. Wow. Wow. So he was like behind like some record breaking kickers at Texas State and Central Arkansas. All right. And then was just the kickoff specialist. Record breaking kickers at Texas State and Central Arkansas. Like the Texas State guy has like the most field goals made in Texas State history. And this guy was behind him. And then he said the guy from mm. Arkansas should be the first kicker drafted this year. Yeah. Grande. Grande. Yeah, that's true. All right. Yes. Did All you right. see my buddy Zashin sent me a uh, thing? Of, have you seen the video of that 6'7 punter that was punting the ball 90 yards out of stadiums? No. I'm into that too. Yeah. He's, Zashin's a punter aficionado. If you could, if you could find a 6'7 guy who could punt it out of stadiums, that certainly changes punt coverage. Yeah. You know, one of that. Well, think about it. Don't hit it the 90 yard. How about a 70 yarder that's a moon ball? Moonball, like, baby. Like Jeff Blake used to throw to Carl Pickens. Boy, that's some great references there. The used moon ball. That was fun. That used was to leave team. the TV screen. Yeah, it would. <laughs> yeah, like that. I think a punter threw a touchdown in the UFL this week, too. I think they had some crazy special You know what? We st- we were talking about this when you were off. Um, or maybe were you and I were you and I talking about that? why they didn't use XFL or USFL? That was yesterday. That was yesterday? Yeah, yeah. I went over the numbers. The numbers came out. And they were, it was around a million. It was down from what the USFL debuted significantly and down from XFL debuted. Um, it was still fine. It was around a million. They don't have to be. Here's the thing, They don't though. need three million. They need. That's where they need to be. That's way more than, like, live. Like, it's about what golf is. It's better than NHL. But it's I'm the baseball. audience. I had no idea okay. that it was So debuting. this was my beef. Why would you debut it now? Yeah. Right? When you're, you're, you're the promotional arms – of your networks, be it Fox or ESPN, and they're partners with both. Like ESPN's doing women's college basketball, it's doing 12 million viewers. Like they're yep. not promoting it. So they needed to launch it. I would have launched it Masters weekend, probably. Um, that's not ideal either, but you got to launch it sometime or even this weekend, the weekend of the Final Four. Like you could have launched it. There's only two games on Saturday for the men, there's two games on Friday for the women. National Championship women is Sunday. And national championship men is uh, Monday. is Monday, so there was time when you could have launched this weekend to launch it when they did. And then I said the other thing that was crazy is I understand it's a merger, but like both the USFL and the XFL have brand integrity. We know what they are. There's nostalgia to both. Whether you're your age and you remember the XFL and you were going to games in Birmingham, or you're older and you remember the USFL from the '80s. There's a brand recognition to it. Absolutely. So they should have been either the XFL or the USFL. doesn't matter which. And instead, they're the two divisions. There's one division that's USFL, one division that's the XFL. That's called the UFL. But in doing so, nobody knows what the hell you are. Right. So they kind of blew it on the brand. And it was not, as wasn't I said, promoted, at promoted all. well. No, not at all. So it's, yeah. But this guy will get a look. Yeah. If you can do that. Bring it in. How do you not? Why would you not? Bring it in. Do a tryout. Who gets Bring it in. Meet the neighbors. Meet I, I know That's a sand it. guy. Get it at a good price. A very good price. Uh, all right. We'll do the whip coming up next. Show us to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
All right, welcome back into Cleveland Browns Daily on a uh, on a first Friday, kids. That's right. That's right. Indeed, it is. Uh, time for the whip. Go ahead, Uno. First question: What has been the most underrated move the Browns have made during this off season? The fact that we're talking seriously about a dome. It's <laughs> all we've ever wanted. By the way, that press conference I had t- referenced on Monday actually happened on Monday with the city councilman who went yeah. a, a bit aggressive. Just a touch. B-E-A-G-G-R-E-S-S-I-V-E. Yeah, very. We'll yeah. See you in court. All right. Well, uh, here's the other thing. So <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna we'll go to we'll go to Uno on this one. You ready, Uno? I don't know. Is he? Hopefully. Uno. He goes what? Hopefully. What is the name of that airport right here? Yeah. It is called the what? Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. What was the first word there? Cleveland. Okay. So that's the Cleveland Airport. Right. The place that we're talking about in Brook Park is maybe I could hit a five iron stinger. Oh, you could sting it. Like Tiger, was that Royal Liverpool where Tiger oh, never hit driver? Stingers. Just yeah, just, yeah. I get, I get hit a nice stinger yeah. from Brook Park to the. What was the name of the airport again? What was the first word? Cleveland Hopkins International Airport. Yep. Thank you. Full stop. Yeah, it's being made out as though this would be a move to Timbuktu. Correct. Toledo to another state. Even it sounded like even like we're not going to let them move out of Cleveland. Like. This is Cleveland. Sure is. Like when you go somewhere and people say, where are you from? If it's like you're in Hawaii. Yeah. Are you saying Hudson or are you saying I'm from Cleveland? You're saying Cleveland, yeah. Yeah. Cleveland. That's right. And the notion that like the Dallas Cowboys don't play in Dallas. No, they do not. Okay. They do not. The New York Jets and Giants don't even play in the state of New York. They do not. No, but no, guess no. what they are in close proximity close to New proximity, York. yeah. Yeah. It's funny, like, how many NFL teams do you think actually play in the city proper? N- Detroit. Let's do it. Chicago. We got time. We got time. So. Chicago, kind of. Let's go. Well, okay. They do right now. Let's do by division. Right now they're downtown. By division. So AFC East. All right, I'm pulling them all up. I the Miami right. Dolphins, no. Miami Dolphins, definitely no. Buffalo, Buffalo Bills, no. Because no. no. that's what's Orchard Park. Orchard Park. New England, no. New England, no. Jets, no. Well, New England's not a city, so but no, they're but not in Boston. Boston. No. And the New York Jets, no. So we're 0, for, we're 0 in the AFC. AFC South. Houston, Houston, no. Indy, yes. Yep. Jacksonville. Yes. Yes. And Nashville, yes. Yes. Tennessee, yes. So three. Yep. AFC West. LA. Technically no. No. That's it's not. That's Inglewood. Inglewood. Yeah. Yep. So no. Denver. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's I think close so. enough. Yeah, it's yeah. Kansas City, no. No. Kansas City, no. Vegas, yes. And Las Vegas, yes. So we're now at five. Yep. And then AFC. North. The North is going to be. It's going to be. Yes. Cleveland. Yes. Pittsburgh. Yes. Baltimore. Yes. Yeah. So So that that would be the nine of 16 in the AFC. Yep. In the NFC. Dallas. No. Let's go. Okay. We'll go. NFC East. Dallas. No. Giants. No. no. New York Giants. No. Philly. Washington. No. Washington. No. Philly. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Uh, NFC South. Atlanta. Yes. Atlanta, yes. Tampa? It's near the airport. It's I don't know if it's it's I don't Tampa know if that's technically City. Tampa. I don't know. I don't know. Look that he looked that up for us, Uno. Carolina, yes. They're right in Charlotte. And then yeah. Atlanta, Tampa. New Orleans, yes. Yeah. All right. So we got three and one so far. NFC West. LA no. Niners no. Seattle, yes. Arizona, Arizona no. no. Seattle, yes. So one. Yep. And then the NFC North. Minnesota, yes. They'd be all yes. Green Bay, yes. Chicago, yes. Detroit, yes. So four, one, nine. So it's 18 out of 32. 
Yeah. And it's eight of eight in the but, north. And, and, and I'll take t- the north out. It's then it's 10 of 22. Then it's 10 of 22. And the other thing is, is like <laughs> this, many of these, like this, the Dallas equivalent of this would be if you built a stadium in Canton. Yeah. Akron. Yeah. Canton. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's 40 minutes. You're right. That's right. You know? Yes. Tampa is four. Their stadium is four miles from downtown. Yeah. It's pretty close. But the there's well, how many miles would this be from downtown? Oh gosh. Ten? Yeah. yeah. Fifteen probably. Maybe less. 15. I just yeah. looked up on the map here to downtown is fifteen. Yeah. Yeah. But it's all Cleveland. Um most underrated move by the Browns, I think, by the rest of the league is Judy. I don't think it got enough I don't think it's I think it's gonna be far more impactful than the rest of the league acted like it would be. I really like the fit. I'll I'll give the other one other than the dome. Which, by the way, have you – this is just anecdotal, but in yeah. my time around town and mm-hmm. people coming up to me and sharing their opinions with me, which oftentimes happens, unsolicited. <laughs> happens a lot unsolicited, yes. It's 100% dumb. Like, yes. Not even – No, it's not I've close. not heard one person say – No. No. No, I really dumb. want to be outside and not suck. One. Yeah. No. No thanks. Um, All right. Uh, I was going to say Jordan Hicks. Yeah, he's, he's nice. Leader. Stud. True Mike will be very good. Okay. Which team has had the most improved roster through this much of the offseason? Is this in is this in the league? In the, in league? the whole league, yeah. I mean, Houston would be sh- on a short I list. I wrote this before they traded for Diggs, so I didn't. Yeah. I mean, they're on a short list. Pittsburgh is on a short list just because of the position. Yeah. Atlanta. Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta is on I, a short I say list. Atlanta. Atlanta. Houston was going to come into this season whether they really did much and was going to be considered probably a favorite in their division. Atlanta totally ch- changed their trajectory. Yeah, they they could win the NFC. Yes. Yeah. And I and I think Pittsburgh too. And Pittsburgh went from So what's like interesting competent quarterback play how, to How about Vegas though? They're at seven and a half. Yeah, we did and that. They've never had a losing season with Mike Tomlin. I don't understand that. I don't get that at all. I don't. And I also, the other thing, we did a power ranking yesterday that had the Chargers like 26th in the league. And I'm like, they still have Herbert. And Harbaugh wins. Harbaugh like, wins. He's going to win. He's like, the number six coach in the league. Right. Come on, man. Pro Football Network. Yeah. Yeah. Fact or fiction, the AFC will have two new division champions this season. Well, they still well listen, if a guy on the Colts could have caught a swing pass, I would say yes. I think it's fact. There's going to be a new champion in the AFC North, and there'll be a new champion in the AFC East. Yeah, I think we would have three. I think the other two repeat. I think we'd have three or four if if the Colts guy just caught a pass. Yeah, that's true. Because then... Indy would have won it. Indy would have won it. Yeah. Yep. Also factor fiction, with the addition of Stephon Diggs, the Texans have the best wide receiver room in the NFL. I don't even want to even think... No, fiction. No. I mean, right now, they're not better than Cincinnati. They're not better than no. the Jets right now. No, um, Jets, man. Who else? I mean, are they better than – I don't. Even, the Bears are pretty good right now. With I'm not sure they're better than our room. I'm being totally honest. That's not even Homer glasses. Is Stephon Diggs good anymore? Well, I, yeah. Last 10 games were brutal. He's brutal. Um, who would be – who has the best? The, the Vikings? Jefferson, Addison, and whoever? Miami. Miami, Miami, Bill is, Waddle. Miami's crazy. Eagles. Miami and the Jets are crazy. Eagles. The Eagles are crazy. The Niners. The Bengals are crazy. Niners have Niners Iukens, are really Debo. good. No, they're not. They're not even close. No, not close. No, no. There's I, several, several better. Now their overall portfolio is nice. It's a nice portfolio. Yeah, it is. The final one, fact or fiction, Marvin Harrison will not be the first non-QB selected in this draft. This one comes courtesy of Griff. Of course fiction. It is. Fiction. fiction. Here's, here's a little lesson. Were you guys were you two listening yesterday when I had Eric Edholm on? And we were talking, and he said something that you and I have lamented many times. Oftentimes, what is said in February at the Combine is the truth. And the roadmap to get back to that truth is windy. And can be you can be derailed all over the place, but it usually comes back to what people believe at the combine. 
and you get prospect fatigue too. You think well, you start to see things in neighbors that you didn't see before, and then he's number it's also, one. And right. It's also look. You get two months of content. You got to put out. Yes. Right. So like, I think it was um, it was Jeremiah, Jeremiah. Right before, right when I was on, when I was right before I was going on vacation, he's like, I choose chaos. So he chose like a chaos mock draft. So he doesn't really believe it. Yeah. But here's some content that's chaotic. Well, this is even, fun to yeah. look at. He said and so, before he posted, going to choose chaos today. Yeah, yeah, enjoy the right. mock. Enjoy the mock. And it's just for entertainment. It's not the way it's actually going to go. Like, Ed Holm had J.J. McCarthy number two. That's a hell of a spot to go from the fifth quarterback before the process started to now second. J.J. Yeah. McCarthy's going second to Washington. He's good in interviews. Go watch the tape and see if you can throw it over the middle. Like, that stuff will come back. That's So, we, we deal with this every year. There was a time when Kyle was taking Mac Jones, yep. and then Mac Jones fell. Usually, Malik you, Willis. Malik Willis was going yeah. in the top ten. It's one of those things where usually the combine is is the real truth. So Oopsie. I think that Marvin Harris now he might not go to Arizona at four. Arizona may trade out of four, net a couple of first round picks. Minnesota comes up to four. Denver comes up to four. They may move out of it, and he may go to the Chargers at five. Sure won't Justin be 26 in the like power that. rankings anymore. So would Marvin Harrison Jr. Playing with in Harbaugh's offense with Herbert. Do you think that he living would, in Los Angeles? Would he rather sold. do that or go to? I think Arizona could trade back to five. They have enough. They can do whatever they want. They have enough yeah, they could. They have enough. They, want. they could. I would rather play with Herbert if I'm if I was Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah. Then I think I could basically play my dad's career with Peyton Manning, couldn't I? Yeah. Herbert's gonna throw for five thousand every year. I'll catch fifteen hundred yards. Live in Southern California. Yes. Quite nice. You must feel like that's a win. That's a win, dog. That's a win for sure. That absolutely gets it done. Yeah. I think this is going to be an interesting draft. All right, I'll add one more for you right now. Go. Fact or fiction. The Browns' first two picks will both be tackles. For the sake of us, I hope fiction. I think just it's probably gonna be fact. Just because <laughs> I know I feel it, I felt like it was a loaded question. I hope it's fiction because I, that's a tough talk. Yeah, you know, it's a tough talk. It just it feels like those are the places where you have the biggest need for somebody that can be a stud for maybe this year, but most likely for next year. Yeah, like I don't know that who you're drafting to play right now. It's not on the back end of your no, defense. It's no. not at the I think, second level. It's not at the the front, and it's not. No. It's, I think no what way. they, you know, you, you, I think what you got, what you can do, and we've Andrew's done this a couple years in a row now. Is he has improved? He's addressed all of his questions in free agency, so he can draft. Really, for the this has been going on since the Jed Wills draft. He's been able to draft where if something falls to him that he loves, or he's if there's a player, it. he can just go get him. He can find a way to go get him, or he can just take the, the highest-ranked player on his board. Yep. So there, there's the potential for that. This is an incredibly deep receiver-tackle draft. So the player value you may get at that le- at that range. The other thing about tackle, receiver, corner, like those are the positions that you end. Those are the ones you pay the most for. Those are premium positions. So you want as many at-bats at those positions as you can get. That's right. And try to try to hit gold. I mean, they struck gold with with Big Thanos. Saw him yesterday. Looked great. Looks great. Looked great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think that's that's the thing. That's the thing on that. So all right. So much more to come. You listen to Cleveland Browns Daily on eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.
So I'm seeing the Masters is coming up in a couple of weeks. Yes. Um, you, you saw the comments from Rory McIlroy, like this is not sustainable. And Rom said it today. Yeah, and Rom saying it today. DeChambeau uh, today as well. There, there's a tournament at Trump National in Miami. Uh, the fans are what drive this sport. He says if we don't have fans, we don't have golf. We're not up here entertaining. It's the most important thing right now, the low-hanging fruit. There's got to be a way to come together if it needs to happen faster. It's not a two-year thing. Uh, like it needs to happen quicker rather than later just for the good of the sport. Too many people are losing interest. So – for sure. <laughs> yeah, because the fields sure. aren't what you want to see. No. And Other so the than majors the majors are still great. The majors aren't there's no problem with the majors. They're doing great. But no one is watching live. I mean they're no can, they're like a hundred thousand people watch those things every weekend. But the thing is, how are they gonna make a merger where those guys they're still gonna want to get their money? Yeah, you all took the money. Right. And all of us would too. Of course. Like anyone who's critical of those guys. If no, John Rom got four hundred million dollars, you'd all take it too. But so how is it gonna work if the live doesn't exist? How are they still gonna how's John Rom still gonna get his money? I have no idea. But I, I think that's the thing. If you're the live guys, you're saying, well, why does the PGA have to exist? But the the thing that, that I think we've, we definitely know is the live format, folks aren't interested in. They don't no. want the team. They don't want three games, dates. They don't want, they want golf finishing on Sundays. They want four rounds. They want a standard that we've become accustomed to. Yep. And they have not resonated at all. No. That tour has resonated none. But the people who own it don't care. Because that, I don't think that was the intent. The intent was to buy golf. Yeah. And they were close to doing it last summer, but then that thing fell apart. So I don't know where it all stands. It's interesting. But, yeah, the average – and Two minutes. Two minutes. You now – the majors take on so much more importance because they're the only times you have a full field. It's the only thing. But yeah. golf isn't that good. Right. It's not – you need to have full fields all the time. You need to see the best yes. playing against the best. I wonder if there would be a way for there to be a PGA Tour – and and a live variety, this team sport. I, you feel like you could just admit like this what is the worked. NFL? I mean, the NFL all of a sudden was just the NFC, and oh, all the AFC teams were playing their own thing. Yeah, yeah. No, it's crazy, and it, and playing a different sport almost. Yeah. So like, I do wonder if they could like integrate twelve of these. Li- but th- you're right with the money. How are they gonna? How are they gonna disperse it to the guys who took the money? They're still gonna want their cash. Yeah. Yeah. I, it's not an easy fix, and it's a big, big problem at the moment big problem so. well right because without fans then there aren't tv one ratings minute, and if there aren't tv ratings and there isn't money and if there isn't money then you have nothing well then the live guys they can stand to lose money because they have infinite they so care. they don't care about ratings they don't care about any of it the truth They're is trying they to need to slowly strangle out the pga tour they need to buy the pga tour which has it comes with its own set of issues call their new thing the pga tour yeah and, and just go back to just that. Just go back to that. Go back, but then they're going to have to give money to all the rest of those guys. Sure, thirty. You know to make 30. it right. Sure. Yeah, it's a mess. Uh, all right. Enjoy your first Friday, kids. The next level coming up next. We're back tomorrow. Cleveland Browns Daily, eight fifty ESPN Cleveland.